Hello and welcome to today's Alchemy Coffee Break session. Today's topic will be translating .NET applications with Alchemy Catalyst. Alchemy Catalyst supports uh, the translation of .NET applications. The advantage of using Catalyst in that case is that you will get support for all versions of the .NET framework, meaning you can, uh, you know, which is going from 1 to 4, sorry. Uh, you can also use binary localization when translating a .NET application, which means that you can just insert the main assemblies into a TTK and we will um, allow you to translate these and generate the satellite assemblies automatically. The advantage of doing so is obviously that you will then get interactive visual translation and the translators will be able to see the forms and dialog boxes on which they're working. This is obviously not obligatory, you can use the ResX files as well. I think the simplest thing to do at this stage is to go into the demo. So let me, before I go into Catalyst actually, let me show you the files we're about to process. So we have a, a folder here called demo containing different versions of .NET applications. So there's applications from version 2 and before, uh, 3.5, here we have a little SDK sample, and 4.0 uh, that we have, sorry, that we have here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert these into a TTK and then we'll uh, have a look at one of those and see what we get. So let's take Catalyst, create a new TTK. We go from English into French. Uh, let me give it a proper name and then insert the files. So let's insert files and folders. I will need to go into my location. Because I want to insert a subfolder, I will select Include Subfolders and Preserve Hierarchy and click on OK. If we look at the result pane, you will see that for each file, we are analyzing the file, passing the file, recognizing its .NET version. Then we will pass the file, usually using the latest version of the .NET framework, and we will then see what we find in the file. So if we take the SDK sample, we know that it's a .NET 3.5 assembly. We pass it with version 4.0 because it's found on the machine. And then we found so many resources of type PAML, which have localizable content, and we will then pass these. We may find one or more sections that are not translatable. This is when the switch has not been flicked. Okay, so this gives you an example of, you know, the kind of feedback you get when you insert a .NET binary file. So because we've looked at our uh, SDK sample. Let's have a look and see what we can see. We see version information. If I click on the version, I will have uh, some information, you know, standard version information really. And then we have the BAML forms. And if I select one of the forms, you will be able to get a visual preview of the form, which, as I said, is fully interactive, meaning I can click on an item and translate it. As soon as I translate it, the view will refresh and I can see exactly what I'm translating. You know how I'm translating it. Uh, here, I just need to put a space and probably here we'll put it as well. Now, what I could say is I could make the translation a lot bigger and in that case you can see that because this is uh, WPF, by default it will uh, resize the form automatically. There we go. So for other items, we can also see this with more advanced uh, string transformation. So here you can see the string is animated, but nonetheless, if I simply select it, I will be able to translate it without uh, any hassle. So here we can say vector. There we go. So as you can see, when we're translating from binaries, even in WPF format, where there's a lot of transformation on the text, we are still able to give that immediacy of preview, meaning you can see exactly what you're translating. Okay. Now, obviously, in a real life scenario, at this stage, the file would get completely translated. They would have been analyzed, you know, uh, sorry, translation memory can be used, we can lock, we can add keywords, we can do all the things we do in Catalyst. This is just a quick sample to show you what you can do with .NET files specifically. So we'll assume this is completely translated now and we want to generate our set of files. Because I have multiple files, I'm going to go to the root of the project, right click and select extract. I want to extract all of the files. I'm going to extract them into the folder and click on OK. 
Once I do that, you get, uh, because, you know, .NET uses satellite assemblies for the different languages, what we want to do is we want to extract the satellite assembly in a language subfolder R of our original file. So Catalyst will check that with you. Uh, if you extract file by file for each file, if you extract the whole project for the first file, and then we'll use the same relative path for all of the files. So here, I'm just making sure that this is the correct location. It is. So I click on OK. And Catalyst will proceed extracting all of the files. So now what we can do is we can have a look at our um, structure. Let's go here in the Explorer, go into the demo folder 3.5. Here is my SDK sample, and here is its French satellite resource. I'm not sure whether we've generated one for 2.0. Yes, we have, and you can see here we have the satellite resource for the different uh, files as well. So, because we have a satellite resource, and because my uh, computer is set up as using French regional setting, when I double click on this, I should get the French translation. So let's have a look at our form to start with. And you can see here that the form has been uh, translated. Now, well, the two strings are translated, are translated, should I say. We can also do the same with our animated vector content. And you can see that the um, text is translated. So as you can see, we've been able to translate um, the strings very easily and this hasn't impacted the functionality of the software. We are still able to use the software. We've generated a satellite assembly and whenever the machine setting is set to the correct language, these strings will be displayed in re the relevant language. So this concludes our um, quick demonstration of the translation of .NET applications with Alchemy Catalyst. As a summary, um, beside the fact that you can target all of the version of the .NET framework, I would also point out the binary localization. You don't need the source code. You can use it if you want to, but you don't have to. And when you translate from a binary, you will automatically generate the relevant satellite assembly for your application. Also, Using the binary localization means the translators will have interactive visual translation and will be able to see what they're translating. If you have any further questions on the topic of .NET translation with Alchemy Catalyst or any other Alchemist related topic, please don't hesitate to contact us at info at alchemysoftware.ie. In the meantime, thank you very much for attending this presentation and have a nice day. Goodbye.